I'm proud of many things I've done in my life, including more than a few in the last eight years. But nothing has ever given me as much satisfaction as when, after several years in California, I could bring my mother and father out here and give them a home the first they had ever owned. So you see, I'm campaigning this year also for them. A son, a son of Jack and Nellie Reagan never walked away from a battle on principle. And this year's election is that kind of fight, and by darn, we're going to win it. Hi, I'm Melissa, and welcome to this month's Live from at the Reagan Library. Thank you so much for joining us each month. We really appreciate you tuning in. Well, I'm not sure if wherever you're watching from, if you're from California or you're familiar with the California COVID tiering system, but unfortunately, Calif almost all of California is back in the purple tier, which is the most restrictive tier. And if you're in the purple tier, indoor museums cannot be open for operation. So at this point in time, we honestly have no idea when the Reagan Library can reopen our doors to the public, and it's heartbreaking. Um, so we thought that we might take this live from and do something a little different. We've been showing you galleries every month, but since we don't know when we're going to reopen, we thought we'd change it up a little bit. So in this live from video, we're taking questions from you. So what we've done is we've culled together um, the most asked questions that you have asked on all of our social media channels. We looked on Instagram and Twitter and and Facebook, we've pulled up all those questions. I have them in my hands. Um, I'm going to answer them, but we also want to answer them live. So please go into the comments section if you have any questions about Ronald Reagan or the Reagan Library or just you know anything and um, ask them again in the comments section. And when I'm done with the questions I already have, I'm going to take the questions live that you submit. And if for some reason I don't know the answer, because it's very possible I don't know the answer, um, we'll get back to you in the comments section in the next, within 24 hours, we'll actually give you an answer typed if I can't verbally give you that answer. Um, so let's start with the questions that we do have. Um, we have a handful. Um, the first question we get a lot is, uh, who were President Reagan's favorite United States presidents? Um, Ronald Reagan really liked um, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, and Calvin Coolidge. Uh, we're often asked, what was his first job? You know, did he work when he was a little kid or as a teenager? He did. Ronald Reagan's first job was when he was only 14 years old. He got a job helping a construction contractor digging ditches. He worked 10 hours a week, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, six days a week, 10 hours a day, um, and he was only paid 35 cents an hour. Now, when he was a sophomore in high school, he got another job. He started working in the summers uh, as a lifeguard um, at uh, Lowell Park on the Rock River. He worked seven consecutive summers. He worked Memorial Day to Labor Day. He worked seven days a week. He worked 14 hours a day. And um, over the course of those seven summers, every time he saved a life, he would make a notch in this big log that was there. And at the end of the seven summers, he had saved um, 77 lives. Um, pretty incredible. All the money that he made as, a, um, as, as someone who digged, uh, dug ditches and as a uh, lifeguard, he saved for his college education. And by the time he went off to college, he had saved $200 to help pay for his tuition. Um, what were some of his nicknames, uh, we've been asked? Um, well, uh, when he was a little toddler, he got a new haircut. His father joked um, that he looked like a little fat Dutchman. And then the nickname Dutch stuck. Um, he was called Dutch. Uh, by friends and family almost his whole life. In fact, I think it's 1985, he was already president of the United States, and um, there was an all-star tribute to Dutch Reagan. So the nickname really stuck with him his whole life. Um, then, of course, probably one of his more famous and well-known nicknames, when he was an actor, he played George Gipp in Newt Rock and the All-American. The famous line, win one for the Gipper, stuck. And so he was known as Gipp or Gipper, win one for the Gipper, through his presidency as well. And then Mrs. Reagan used to call him Ronnie. That's another question you guys ask. Uh, did President Reagan have a favorite song? He did. It was Nancy with the Laughing Face. Um, what was the favorite film Ronald Reagan ever made? So um, Ronald Reagan made about 50 movies um, throughout the course of his career when you add in the movies that he made for Warner Brothers and the movies for the first uh, motion picture unit when he was in the military. Um, he also made a lot of television programming through General Electric. Um, but there were two movies that were his favorite. The first we just mentioned, 1940, when he played George Gipp in Newt Rock and the All-American. And the second was in 1942, when he played the lead character of Drake McHugh in King's Row. Um, it was probably his favorite. And then in 1943, that movie actually went on and got an Academy Award nomination for Best Movie. 
Um, just sort of rounding out the movie questions that we get. Uh, his first movie was in 1937. He played um, a role in a movie called Love is on the Air, and he later joked it was a very easy transition from, for him to be an actor because prior to being an actor, he was a radio announcer for WHO Radio, and in, and in Love is on the Air, he played a radio announcer, so it was very easy for him to do. And the only time that him and Mrs. Reagan ever acted in a movie together was in 1957 when they co-starred in Hellcats of the Navy. Um, what sports did he like to watch? He loved to watch Major League Baseball, and he loved to watch football. He didn't care if it was pro football or college football. He just really enjoyed watching it. <clears throat> um, what was his favorite hobby? We get this one a lot. Um, Ronald Reagan loved to ride horses. Um, he loved to be with horses. It helped him clear his mind. Um, he loved being out on nature. He loved being on the horse trails. Um, so that's probably his favorite. He also really loved manual labor. He loved to go to his ranch, Rancho del Cielo, up in the San Ynez Mountains, um, cut brush, chop down trees, um, manually fix things with his hands on his on a little ranch house or on the dock. Um, just something he really liked to do. Um, more simple things, he also enjoyed golfing and swimming. Um, we were asked a handful of times if Ronald Reagan was ever in the military. He was. He enlisted in the Army Enlisted Reserve in 1937 um, as a private. Um, he was later promoted to second lieutenant and was assigned to 323rd Cavalry. That's actually where he learned horses and where he fell in love with horses. Um, he was never able to serve overseas because he had really poor eyesight. In 1942, he was promoted again. Uh, he was transferred to the first motion picture unit. He became a first lieutenant, and he remained in active duty until December 9th of 1945. Uh, we've been asked if Ronald Reagan wore glasses or if he wore contact lenses. Um, if you recall back just a moment ago when we were talking about his military career, I mentioned he never served overseas because of his poor eyesight. He was diagnosed as a little kid as being nearsighted. In fact, in his autobiography, he mentions that he thinks maybe one of the reasons why he was shy is that he really felt like he couldn't see, so he stayed close to home. Um, when he went to high school, he started wearing glasses, um, which really helped him expand his vision and, and really expand his world. And then when he became an actor, he switched to contact lenses. Uh, we're uh, um, often asked if he had a favorite book. In fact, someone just asked it again yesterday. He did. His favorite book was the Bible. Um, did he have a favorite cologne? Ronald Reagan's favorite cologne was a brand called Royal Briar. And a fun fact is our museum store here on property sells Royal Briar. So if you want to own the same cologne that Ronald Reagan owned, you want to smell like Ronald Reagan, our store isn't open in person, but it is open online. Um, so just go to reaganlibrary.com store, and you too can own Royal Briar. And just a little pl plug, Christmas is right around the corner, so it's not too late to give your special loved one, or friend, or even yourself a great gift from the Reagan Library Museum store. Um, we get asked a lot of questions about jelly beans, jelly bellies, um, and, you know, were they really on his desk in the Oval Office? Did he really eat them? Why did he start eating them? So the story is that Ronald Reagan was running for governor in the 1960s, governor of California, and uh, he wanted to give up his habit of pipe smoking. So he started eating jelly beans. Um, he was successful. He did stop um, smoking pipes. Um, he started eating jelly beans, and the jelly beans that he preferred to eat were from a company called the Mini Golitz Candy Company. And the company heard that he was eating their, their jelly beans, and so when he was governor of California, they started shipping him monthly supplies. Um, the company later changed their name to the Jelly Belly Candy Company. Ronald Reagan uh, followed their change and started eating jelly bellies. And when, uh, he was, um, uh, when he won the campaign for the presidency in November of 1980, um, the Jelly Belly Candy Company shipped three and a half tons of red, white, and blue jelly, be jelly bellies, which were coconut, cherry, and blueberry, to the White House so that for his 1981 inauguration, they would have red, white, and blue jelly bellies there for him. Ronald Reagan's favorite flavor uh, was black licorice. Now, the jelly bellies were everywhere. They were on his Oval Office desk. They were on his stateroom desk on Air Force One. They were in meetings that he attended. And if you were lucky enough or fortunate enough to go to the White House to visit him or for a meeting, you might be gifted a special gift of a little glass jar with the White House seal filled with jelly bellies. Of course, just another plug for our store. We sell a lot of jelly bellies in our store. We even sell a glass jar with the Reagan Library seal on it filled with jelly bellies. Uh, again, reaganlibrary.com slash store. Um, other than Jelly Bellies, what were some of his favorite foods? We get asked this kind of question in a variety of different ways. Um, Ronald Reagan 
loved all kinds of food, but really down to it, his favorite foods were all American. He loved grilled hamburgers, he loved macaroni and cheese, he loved chocolate cake and chocolate chip cookies. He did not like Brussels sprouts and tomatoes and liver. Um, so those are the questions that I had written down um, from all of you. Again, I'd love to take some of your questions live, so please, if you haven't already, go to the comment section uh, right below this Facebook feed that you're watching, and um, let me see how many I can answer. It's really fun when we're able to engage in this way. I'd love to see your questions, and again, if I can't answer it live right now, um, then um, we'll answer it. We'll go in and, and type in the comment section and fill it in. Uh, giving you just a moment to do that. We had a handful of people just over the past 24 hours in the comment section for the plug of this live event ask some questions. So I'm going to answer those really quick just to give you another about 30 seconds to ask some questions. Um, at 80s Queen asked, what was the favorite activity President and Mrs. Reagan enjoyed doing together? They loved just spending time together. So um, they loved to, this is not an exaggeration, even when they were President and Mrs., you know, First Lady of the United States, they love to sit in their private residence, eat dinner on TV trays, and watch old television shows, watch old movies, and they also really enjoyed just going out for strolls, um, whether that was at the White House or Camp David or Rancho Del Cielo. Um, this is a, a long number. At Trump, 207-076-1192, um, asked if Ronald Reagan ever visited the Philippines. Um, President Reagan never visited the Philippines, but Governor of California Ronald Reagan, uh, Governor and Mrs. Reagan visited the Philippines in September of 1969. Um, President Nixon asked Governor Reagan to go to the Philippines on the President's behalf uh, to represent him for the opening of a cultural center. <clears throat> Um, Norrin Hughes asked, uh, what would Ronald Reagan's advice be for young people who want to be successful? Now, obviously this is just my opinion of what his advice would be, because I don't, I, not a question I was ever able, fortunate enough to ask the president, but just, you know, from reading his autobiography and really learning about him and studying him, I'd have to say it's really just, you know, work hard. It um, doesn't matter what kind of life you were born into. If, you know, you, you look at Ronald Reagan's childhood, um, they were poor, they came from, uh, you know, a home with not a lot of means. His father was an alcoholic, um, and he didn't let that stop him. He just worked harder. Ronald Reagan believed strongly in the American dream. You know, the plaque on his White House desk was, it can be done. If you put your mind to it, you can achieve it. And, you know, again, he would say, here I was, this kid from a family with not a lot of money. They moved constantly because the father was always losing his job from being an alcoholic. So they were constantly changing cities, looking for other work, looking for other jobs. Um, he had to work his way through college. Um, you know, wasn't sure, he, he thought he was gonna be an um, employee at Sears for his whole life, he really did, um, a salesman at Sears, and then he ended up getting, you know, the, um, a radio announcer, and then an actor, and then governor, and, you know, president. Um, you can make your dream come true if only you work hard enough. So those are the three questions we got um, online just a little bit ago. Um, loading right now, see if we can find some comments. Here we go. Um, Uh, Wes Skiles is asking if we have videos from the 1985 Bitburg speech. We sure do. If you go to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Reagan Foundation, um, you'll, you can search from all the videos that we do. You can search Ronald Reagan's presidential speeches, uh, post-presidential speeches, campaign speeches, all of the public affairs programming we do, all of our live videos, all of our podcasts. Um, you can even just go on YouTube and do a search for Ronald Reagan and Bitburg address, and that should pop up, but we do have it. Um, and the comments went away. Let me, there we go. Um, are there any other questions? Um, was Ronald Reagan friends with Frank Sinatra? Asked by Nicole Hughes. He was really good friends with Frank Sinatra. Um, they were friends from a younger time, um, from Hollywood. Um, in fact, we have a gift up um, on display in a private area here at the Reagan Library in President Reagan's office that he would use when he would come up in the 90s. And it's actually a Christmas gift from Frank Sinatra. It's, a, it's, a, it's one of my favorite things here. It's a big um, like cabinet, and you open up the cabinet drawers, and each drawer is a different game, checkers, backgammon, chess, darts. And what's so cool about it is that their scorecard is actually in this box um, and so when you open up the little drawer, you see their handwriting as they were keeping score when they were playing darts one day. It's really cool. Um, 
And when um, I was talking a little bit ago, and I was talking about Dutch, and I said in 1985 there was a all-star tribute to, to Dutch Reagan. Frank Sinatra was one of the MCs. I actually just watched it, so that was a lot of fun. Um, my comments keep popping away. Here we go. Um, Gigi, sorry, I'm not sure if I know how to pronounce this. Logis Cero is asking, was he really the genuinely nice guy, uh, which he seemed to be? Um, so I. Um, unfortunately never got to meet him. Um, he stopped coming to the Reagan Library around 1999. I started here in 2001. But I have heard story after story after story of people who worked with him, knew him from all levels, whether they were Secret Service, through his speech writers, um, in his cabinet, um, biographers, and they all say the same thing. Yes, he was genuinely that nice. He genuinely cared about everyone. Everyone was treated equally. He did not care if you were the janitor or his secretary of defense. Um, he had a, um, a moment for you. He wanted to hear you. He wanted to hear your story. He wanted to tell you a joke, um, but he really was that genuinely nice guy. Let's see if we have any other um, questions. Thank you all for watching. We really do appreciate it. Um, Romeo Legaspi asked, did President Reagan pick the site where the Reagan Library is now? Uh, he actually did. Um, it's a long story I'll try and tell kind of quick, but basically when they were looking for a location for the Reagan Library, they originally decided um, uh, basically at Stanford University. That was the original location for the Reagan Library. Many presidential libraries are on college campuses. And as they were getting closer and closer to the time when they were going to break ground, uh, Stanford backed out. They already had the Hoover Institution there. They were worried that they were going to look almost too conservative. So they started looking for new locations to hold the, um, put the Reagan Library. And a land developer, developer stepped forward. Um, he owned this land, it was 100 acres, and he hadn't built on it, and he offered to donate it to Ronald Reagan and the Reagan Foundation to build the Reagan Foundation at no cost. Um, Ronald Reagan came up and saw this land and immediately fell in love um, in the Conejo Valley, Simi Valley at the time. It had barely been built up, and you look out and you can see the Pacific Ocean, you can see the Channel Islands, you see horse trails and mountains and nature, and he fell in love with it. Um, he even go a step further, um, not trying to bring this conversation down, but he even chose on this property exactly where he wanted to be buried because he knew that he wanted to always look out to the west and always look out to the Pacific Ocean. Um, it's a beautiful place. We really do recommend, if we ever do open, when we ever we do open, that you come watch, um, uh, come see it for yourself. Um, those seem to be... Um, Oh, Angie Leahy is asking the names and breeds of the last horses he owned. I wish I could tell you the breeds. I don't know. Um, one of his favorite horses was named El Alamein, a beautiful white horse. And we have a lot of photos here of President Reagan on El Alamein. Um, why did he change his political affiliation in the 1950s, someone is asking, and I can't pronounce your name, but it looks like maybe you're not in America, which is super cool that you're watching, so thank you so much. Um, he was raised a Democrat and just started feeling very disgruntled. He didn't think that uh, the Democratic Party was answering his needs and what he wanted for the government. He felt so strongly in limited government, economic opportunity, individual liberty, national pride. He really felt that, you know, he says, he actually says that he did not leave the Democratic Party, but that the Democratic Party left him, and that's why he ended up becoming a Republican. Um, so we really want to thank you for watching these. I think those are most of the questions we see here. Um, do appreciate all of you who said that, we're, that you're watching. We really do appreciate it. If anyone has an extra question that they want to ask in the next 24 hours or so, we'll continue to monitor this feed. We'll go back in and we'll answer it um, in comments by typing your answer. So thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking your time, that we, you know, joining us each month when we do this. Um, we want to remind you that when we can reopen, we will. We've talked about our YouTube channel. Please subscribe, youtube.com slash Reagan Foundation. We do four podcasts every week, a Reagan forum, words to live by, and then the two that are only a minute long each Monday Minute in the Archives and Thursday Throwback with Ronald Reagan. Such a great way, easy way, and quick way to stay connected to what we do here. Um, we will update our website, our homepage, reaganlibrary.com. As soon as we can reopen, we'll put it there. We're going into the holiday season, so whether you celebrate Hanukkah or Christmas or Kwanzaa or whatever you may celebrate, we are wishing you the happiest and healthiest and safest of holiday seasons and a happy new year. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you in January. My fellow citizens, those of you here at this hall and those of you at home, I want you to know that I have always had the highest respect for you, for your common sense and intelligence, 
and for your decency. I have always believed in you and in what you could accomplish for yourselves and for others. And whatever else history may say about me when I'm gone, I hope it will record that I appeal to your best hopes, not your worst fears, to your confidence rather than your doubts. My dream is that you will travel the road ahead with Liberty's lamp guiding your steps and Opportunity's arm steadying your way. My fondest hope for each one of you, and especially for the young people here, is this is, my hope is that you will love your country, not for her power or wealth, but for her selflessness and idealism. May each of you have the heart to conceive, the understanding to direct, and the hand to execute works that will make the world a little better for your having been here. May all of you as Americans never forget your heroic origins. Never fail to seek divine guidance, and never lose your natural, God-given optimism. And finally, my fellow Americans, may every dawn be a great new beginning for America, and every evening bring us closer to that shining city upon a hill.